Hi, I'm Mike Haddock, and this video will be a tour on Israel I did in 2009. Landed in Tel Aviv, it's like the Caribbean in a lot of ways, and we're looking at Jopa from Tel Aviv. But the guide was very good, and we left from Tel Aviv, and we went to Jerusalem, and he talks a lot about archaeology and uh, history, and I'm going to be doing a lot of talking about stonework. The city from the east. So the whole Jerusalem is actually spread underneath us. All that we see is Jerusalem from north to south and further towards the west. While the modern city is over here, the old city is what we see in front of us with the domes, the golden dome of the rock, there's the Aqsa which is to the left of it, which is the mosque. There's another dome in the Jewish quarter. All of this we're going to see tomorrow. front of us is only a retaining wall that held the platform that on top of this platform stood the temple. But because it's the only remain and it's the closest one to the Holy of Holiest, the holiest section in the temple itself, it became the alternative. It became the holy site for the Jews who are arriving here praying next to the wall. There's a tradition to put notes over there with different requests and so on. And that is the holiest site for Jews today in the world. Here's a couple things that I wanted you to see when you go to these archaeological sites and they have a display. This is how they put the stone inside of a wheel and they move it around that way to make it easier to move. And the other little part of the exhibit, as you can see right here, is a wooden crane, how they would pick those stones up in ancient times. Most of what we see today is a result of the Crusaders building of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Once again, 2,000 years ago, this place is a barren hill. It's a barren hill according to the The shape of the rock looks like a human skull, and therefore it's called Golgotha. In Aramaic, Golgotha means human skull. In Hebrew, we say Gulgole. It's the same family that I mentioned, the Maccabees, are using it as a fortress. But later on, 100 years later, King Herod will first use it as a fortress, but later on when his reign will be stable enough and strong enough, he will, tur he will turn it into a resort. So most of our tour today is going to focus on the first century BC to the first century AD. Then we left Masada, we went along the Dead Sea up the Jordan Valley 
to a place called Bet Shane, which it's an archaeological site, and I didn't know it until I went on this trip. So, before we're going to start with the story of Beichian specifically, which you could see already from the top, the different parts of it, or, or at least the certain parts of, of a city known as Beichian. How do you spell that? Beichian. Mm -hmm. You can write it as B-E-I-T. Okay, Beit, because in Hebrew, Beit, something is the house of She'an, S H. E, uh, comma, A, N, She, An, She, An, that's how, the closest you can uh, spell it, to get Thank the sound, you. no problem. So start from there, look over here, and over here too, and keep on going all the way to here. Here you can see how the dog fell down into the street, and smashed into the tiles of the street, that's why it's half buried, but you can see the size of the column itself. I advise you to get closer and try to tug it and then you'll understand what kind of uh, size, diameter we're talking about. Here what you see is volette, or capital. The volette, the cornies, the threes, and the section which is underneath the gable. The gable will be over here, so you can see how the whole parts fell down together and froze for, for something like 1300 years. Now from Bet Shane, we're going to go right across the map here to the Mediterranean where Caesarea is at. So from Caesarea, we went up to Mount Carmel, where you could actually see Nazareth. And from Nazareth, you could actually see the Sea of Galilee. So we went from uh, Mount Carmel down to Haifa, and then we went up to the Golan Heights, where you could see Mount Hermon, the Golan Heights. And we're going to continue on with Capernaum in the Sea of Galilee. When you look at the village itself, you can see that the houses are very simple. Local stone, which is the basalt, simple, small 
houses, you can tell it from the walls, different entrances and so on. You can also see it later on the other side. By the way, it doesn't mean there's a gap here. It's also underneath us. But these are the parts that have been excavated by the Franciscans. And then you take a look at this structure, and suddenly there's something which is way bigger, way nicer, different stone. This is limestone, most of it, and that's why the color is different which is not really common in this area, which means this structure has some kind of a significance. That's why it's in the heart of the village. That's why it's rising way higher than the rest of the village. And that's why they're using nicer stone and not the common basalt, which is all around us. What we're going to do is to move into this structure, which is the synagogue of Capernaum. And over there, I'll continue a little bit with the explanation and uh, the events that took place over here. Okay? Let's go. The synagogue itself. What we see today is partly renovated by the monks because the upper courses of the stones were replaced by the Franciscans when they started to excavate here in the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. But the foundation is the original one, which means the doorsteps, the doors, the cornice, the decoration, the visits, all of these are original. They've been found over here and just replaced in the right location in order to give you the understanding of how the structure was looked like. In a second I'll explain about the structure itself, but I just want to say that we dated the actual structure over here to a later period than Jesus. We're talking about the 3rd, 4th, 5th century AD, which means several hundred years after the time of Jesus. But most likely it's the actual place of the synagogue itself, because usually different periods will take the same structure and will renovate it, but they will keep the location of it. In this case, Beit Knesset synagogue in the heart of the village. And why is that? Beit Knesset in Hebrew means the house of gathering, Lehit Kness. By the way, synagogue in Greek has the same meaning, house of gathering. That's the meaning of it. Which means, first of all, we're talking about a public structure, house of gathering, to people to come over. It will be a house of praying, <coughs> meditating, because this is the substitute for the destroyed temple. So the religious uh, worshipping acts will take place in this small shrine, as we call it, the substitute for the destroyed temple. It's after the times of the destruction, but it's also used for daily life matters, when you need to take a decision, when you need to celebrate a newborn son or whatever it is, it will take place also here. So how do you do it? You take the Holy Scripts, the Bible, the Torah, and you move it to a separate room. So you can do your daily life issues without the presence of the Holy Scripts. When you need to pray, you take the books inside their box, inside the ark, and you place the ark inside the synagogue, and then you can pray. And it's amazing to find an archaeological finding that most likely support what is written in the New Testament. And therefore, for Christians, the significance of the findings over here and the location is, is very big. It's extremely uh, 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 significant and emotional because they actually see what is written in the book 2,000 years later in the archaeological findings. And therefore, it's a very significant and important site for Christians to come over. And as you will see, other groups are coming here too because the significance is very big. Very confusing, I think. So, I have to say that part of the energy that I'm investing in guiding is, is how to build it right. So people will remember. And the synagogue is over here. From here you can understand the perspective and to get the perspective what kind of a center it's used in this village. You can see it's way up above the common houses, it's different, it's brighter, it's nicer, much nicer. And you see, there's a foundation, I advise you to get closer because soon these guys are going to be here and it's going to be uh, problematic here. And you can squeeze to this side, so we'll leave them also some room to see what we're talking about. 
you can see that the foundations are the original village, as we see outside. These foundations are dated to the first century AD, which means the time of Jesus, the time of Peter, the time of Andrew. Inside, you can see the foundations of the actual house itself, because it keeps on going. But somewhere in the third, fourth, and fifth century, someone is taking the actual house and expanding it. For some reason, you can start seeing walls that are surrounding the structure and focusing, focusing the attention to something in the middle. Then in the 5th century, there's new shape of the structure, what is called octagonal structure, which means eight sides to this concentric structure, what we call martyrium, which means it focuses the attention to the center of the place itself, which is exactly where the house is <coughs> in. On the walls, they've been found graffitis that are mentioning the name of Jesus and Peter. They've been found a lot of oil lamps that have been used here because people came here all the time. And all these evidence that haven't been found around are showing that for some reason, Christians are coming to visit the specific spot and address it as the actual house itself. And therefore we do believe that this is the place where the crippled man is being lowered from the roof to Jesus. Why? Because it's all surrounded with houses and the mob, the people, sorry, not the mob, but the people are crowding around it and there's no access. You have to bring him from the top. When you look underneath us, you see how everything is built. You can add away, very constantly. And when you read it in the New Testament and you see it, you understand what are the distances that we're talking about and how they all come together. Archaeology, which I'll call science in this case, and faith, belief. And this is why it became a focus in this village. The modern structure that we see above our head is a modern church from 1991. Now, general, I don't like this modern structure. And this is the Sea of Galilee standing on the banks of Capernaum. It's not that big. And this would be walking up the bank into where Peter's house was. And here's some of the pebbles I'm gonna pick up. I'm gonna talk about that video a little bit. I was going through the house and I found the old files of when I went to Israel. Now what, what makes this video so important to me is I didn't want to do a, a religious thing. I wanted to do something where it was showing you the stonework because that country has been taken over by Egypt and Greece and Italy and all those countries. Everywhere you go it has everything you want to see in stonework. It's, a, it's an archaeological find and when I went to Bet Shane uh, I was blown away. I didn't even know it existed. I always wanted to go back. But I found the files. I figured, well, I'll make a, a video on Israel until if I ever get back there. But one of the things I want to say is back in 73 when the Israeli war, war broke out, I was in the Mediterranean. And I traveled to all those Middle East countries. I've been in Egypt, Ethiopia, Pakistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Bahrain, but I never went to Israel because the war was going on. So I set it aside and when I went over I had them cheap cameras when they were just coming out. And I figured, well, I got the files, I'm going to put this video out. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next time.